Hey there, Foxy Gamers! Welcome to 10 more things I wish I knew before playing Planet Coaster. This is not meant as a tutorial, but rather a quick start guide with some useful tips that you may not have known immediately. As the rides in your park age, they will become less and less reliable. This not only causes your mechanics to have to inspect them and respond to breakdowns more often, but it will also put a dent in your revenue as you aren't making money while they're being repaired. The simplest way to fix this is to request a refurbishment. It is costly, but still cheaper than building a brand new ride. Take care where you place your exits on roller coasters, as the next guest in line won't start boarding until all of the previous riders have exited. This will help maximize the revenue per hour of your coaster. You can hover your cursor over a pass section and hit delete instead of precisely right-clicking everything. This helps out when trying to clear a large quantity of paths quickly. Just make sure you are in edit path mode to do so. Left-clicking and dragging while building out a path will only allow you to raise or lower your path to a snapped location. However, if you build a new path away from it, you can hold shift while left-clicking to place a precise height, and then you can connect the two paths together. Often it can be frustrating trying to add walls in the right spot to a complicated building. If you simply press shift without moving your mouse, the object you're placing will automatically snap to the highlighted grid. Using this on paths will snap them to the ground. Walls, roofs, and several other building pieces are constrained to a grid. Sometimes you want to make an angled wall, but the piece doesn't exist. The way to get around this is to separate the pieces you are trying to duplicate into their own building. Then if you exit edit mode and select the building, you can duplicate the whole building and place it wherever you like. So you've made a nice group of scenery objects in your park and you want to duplicate them. Unfortunately, if you have more than one piece selected, you can no longer do so. The workaround of this is to place any building piece that has a grid on its icon background nearby. Select the desired scenery objects and building and click Add Standalone Scenery to Selected Building. Now you can duplicate the building itself and place the scenery wherever you like. When you're happy with it, go into Edit Building Mode and delete any objects you don't want. You can, of course, also save scenery as a blueprint, but this is extra work if it's a one-time use. When sculpting land, the difference between flattened to foundation and flattened to surface might be confusing. Flattened to foundation will push all land to the horizontal location of wherever your cursor was when you first clicked. Flattened to surface will push the land to whatever angle the ground was facing where you began your click. Instead of actually clicking the button every time you want to change between push and pull when landscaping, you can simply hold down control for the opposite of whichever you have selected, and it will switch back to normal when you let go. Here's a quick and easy way to place a lot of rocks in a more visually varied group. You may have tried to do something like this with the painfully slow process of placing each rock with the advanced movement tool. What you can do instead is scatter a few smaller rocks first. Then when you go to place the large ones, they will automatically rotate according to the surface it's trying to attach to. By alternating back and forth, you can get some nice natural looking scenes with much less of a headache. So there you have it. I hope you found something useful out of these 10 tips. Thanks for watching, and please like and subscribe if you found this video useful and want to see more like it. You can also find links to other guides in the description below. Until next time, stay foxy everyone!